Hello class. When discussing fundraising and the involvement of other stakeholders, I often bring up the story of noted industrialist C. Davis Weyerhaeuser, who, when asked about what he looked for in potential board members, said, they bring the time, talent, and treasure to the organization. But if I only had one of those, I would hope for treasure. Here in Module 9, we looked at the role of other stakeholders in the fundraising space. We asked the question about the importance of involving others in the collective fundraising efforts of the organization, and noted that one such group is the Board of Directors, the top-line leaders of the organization. For the most part, board members are the financial and legal authority of the organization, and their input and perhaps the resources can set the tone for a culture of fundraising. Our text this week explored some of those board dynamics and explained some of the structural considerations for the board. Uh, in the board governance class, those issues are explored in further detail, but one thing to consider, at least in our context, are the relationships and personal networks that board members bring to an organization. How can a nonprofit leader leverage those relationships, especially in a fundraising effort? Uh, in some boards that I have personally served on, Having others who are well connected to the funding community, or at the very least uh, can garner influence with potential donors, has been a big asset and can alleviate a lot of uncertainty around questions of sustainability. Other stakeholders which we have briefly looked at at times in this class are what the text terms resource development staff. These are the development officers and all staff related to a fundraising effort. Uh, directors of development, major gifts officers, business and community relations officials are all part of the cadre of people whose sole job is to acquire funds and resources for the organization. How can a leader work with these various functions and individuals acknowledging and allowing for their very specialized skill set to flourish? Uh, while many of these are what I would term externally facing functions in fundraising, uh, we cannot forget those who are part of the development effort whose functions are more internal. The people who manage data, the media relations functions, the research, all behind the scenes in development efforts, yet just as important. We cannot forget, of course, the volunteers who make up the lifeblood of the organization and their role in the overall fundraising effort. Armed with the right messages and tools, volunteers can often make a significant impact to the organization's bottom line. At the same time, having these ambassadors of the mission help perpetuate the organization to the greater community. Uh, perhaps one role that we have not spent too much time exploring is the role of the external consultant, especially in a fundraising effort. These external consultants are some of the most valuable yet underutilized resources in philanthropy. People who can provide assistance, uh, perspective, and most of all expertise, especially to those nonprofits who are small or don't have the ability like the big organizations, are some of the best investments that a leader, that a leader should consider. All of these groups have the potential to transform any fundraising effort, no matter how big or how small, and leaders who incorporate these groups effectively set up the organization for success, not just in the immediate, but for the future as well. I want to quickly talk about your last assignment, the fund development presentation, which will be due at the end of the week. Remember that this is a presentation to your peers in this class about a nonprofit organization that you're familiar with. It can be one familiar to you where you have experience, or it can be something that interests you. Regardless, I want you to think of this as if you were a consultant that was hired to spearhead a specific effort, or even general fundraising effort, for the organization. You want to first introduce the organization, and important to the introduction, present why you need to raise funds, as well as how those funds would help advance the organization's mission. You want to include at least two methods that could be used in the organization. So think back to your previous assignment where we examine different solicitation methods and of course analyze why these methods are appropriate. Again, alignment with the mission of the organization is key. 
For example, is a direct mail effort the best way to raise funds for an organization whose sole mission is devoted to recycling and cutting down on the use of resources? What does that message convey? Be sure to include what having the funds will do um, for the organization and what impact your gift will make. A while ago, I was introduced to a framework for development and fundraising. Uh, this framework can be used in a variety of settings and fundraising is just one of them. The way to remember this is by the letters A, N, S, V, E. And you might want to use this as a template for your presentation. A stands for attention. You want to introduce and bring awareness of the organization. What does the organization do and why is this important? N stands for need. Discuss the need for funds, for whatever. Why does the organization need funds in the first place? S stands for satisfaction. What would happen when the organization receives the funds and how will it directly change things or how will it help the mission? V stands for visualization. This is the part where you communicate with greater detail what would occur if the mission is satisfied. Some phrases you could use are, imagine what would happen when you give this amount, and then of course, fill in the blank for them. Finally, E is for execution. This is what's known as the ask. This is the action step. Uh, so fill out the card, dial the number. You can do this by clicking on this link. However you say it, make sure potential donors know that you need their help. And here is the way that this is done. I hope that this framework has given you some ideas and I look forward to seeing your ideas as well. As always, don't hesitate to contact me with questions or comments and I will see you all online.